Let's start it. Let's do it's it. It's been rolling. It's was, been rolling. Oh, you yeah. sneaky. Do you want to plug in the Let's... power? Actually, yeah. Yeah, since true. I'm not good call. This right now. Yeah, we fucked up last time. It, no, <laughs> two times ago. Was it last time? No, no it two. wasn't. Last, it was two times. There's two times. We, but still, because you up. reminded him last yes, time. Yes, yes. And again, you reminded me. Mm-hmm. I just don't want hours of talking to go to waste. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> I'm. Ha- was that? After you guys shit on me? Yeah. Or? No, that was... If we recorded no, that. that. A, yeah, we <laughs> did record that. <laughs> that was okay. caught. It would be nice. <laughs> I love you, John. That was one of the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> He's not laughing. <laughs> I did not find it funny. <laughs> I'm it sure I would have so found it funny, funny. Probably. had I been there. But oh, probably it was would've. so fucking funny. We should probably introduce ourselves. <laughs> okay, yeah. Rolling. It's a fucking can opener. We got to my right. Nathan. Skathen Nar. Yeah. <laughs> John Laxative. Or introduce me. Okay. We should just Don't have even a- let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> we should all tell a laxative story as soon as we say his name. <laughs> I know that you I have one, but I don't. <laughs> just get an audio clip from Dumb and Dumber. He so just classic. like shits his brains. Oh, God. <laughs> And then special guest in front of me right here. Introduce yourself, young man. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Derek. Dark Rose. Dark Rose. Derek. 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 Life with Derek. Nephew of Bob Frog. Ross. Yeah. For real? Actually, my, no. no. <laughs> I, my uncle is Rick Ross, but not the Rick oh, Ross. God. Oh, my God. Like he's skinny not, white cop from He's Manitoulin not the Island, drug dealer Rick or the rapper. <laughs> Manitoulin Island. Yeah. He's so in the middle funny. of fucking nowhere. He's stuck in the 70s. He's old and racist. But. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's well, great. I feel like, I feel like all old people are racist. Not oh all, yeah. but my, a lot, a lot. Like, there's a lot of motherfuckers. I have a few people in my family who are, but then a lot of them are not. Yeah, that's true. I think but there's quite a few old people. There's a sorry. lot of accidentally racist old people. Sorry, true. but not sorry. A lot of you old people are racist. Yeah. Like my mom on the weekend was telling a story, and they were like at a pool. And like they were having a good time, and she's like, she's like, all these children came in, but she's like, all these like, you know, like different color cultural children came. I'm like, why does that matter, mom? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like my parents can do stuff like it, that but, too. Like, but it's but, just the difference of when they grew up, though. Yeah, no, but doesn't that make a difference? Uh, what culture? Are they're? we talking about grandparents or parents? No, uh, my I don't have much experience with my grandparents. So okay, because yeah, my mom's kind of. Dating a black dude, so yeah. it would be kind of oh, so hard. She's definitely not it would racist. be kind of hard to be racist while in a relationship. It would like be that. What if she's racist to Asians, though? You know what? Yeah, I, it's I, I didn't selective think racism, dude. Oh, oh. You're not wrong. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Shit. My stepdad is though. Is racist towards Asians. <laughs> what? <laughs> is this a black he dude? Makes, yes. Yeah, he makes. <laughs> but he's not, making he's racist not jokes that. does not make you racist, okay, though. It's jokes. It is jokes. Because they're just jokes. But, but when, like, is, when does that cross the line? When, well, w- when? if you're white. He, he's, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's not actually. Like, I've heard him say some stuff. It's more just jokes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say some bad jokes. But there is a line that you can cross. Well, obviously. There is. But I think that's with context. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you're just walking down the street... A black guy passes by and your white friend's like, ha, 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 hey, hear about this black joke? He's like, oh, okay. That's uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I Check guess it. so. Like, yeah. me and my friend make fun of each other's cultures and, yeah. like, it's all good. What co- what ethnicity are you? I'm white. White Just as straight shit. straight British. White. Really? Bro- yeah. Even with your mm. curly... Yeah, man. Mexican my, da- my dad had curly hair. He's from England. Did it, you're a little t- you're a little dark though. That's most of my family from England. We're all tan nah, for some reason. There's some sneaky Eastern European. There, there's got to be some. <laughs> there could be somewhere, but I'm British. True, you definitely. Most don't. more more of my family is from England, maybe half than from Canada or anywhere else. True, you definitely don't look it. <laughs> I get told that all the time. Yeah, one hundred percent. But. Uh, it's a hundred percent. One hundred percent British. I'm well. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent British. Ninety percent British, ten percent panda. <laughs> <laughs> and joy. <laughs> Great company. panda jokes. Have you been skating? I have been. I have. You getting back into it? I am. Are you filming yourself? Like I'm not filming myself because I'm still not open? that good. I'm not waiting true. till I can do some tricks. I'm still 
learning the tricks. I can ride around. Did you used to be hardcore into it? Though? Not hardcore. Like, I still wasn't that great before, but I could do tricks. Like a pop shove it? Oh, yeah. Get a video. Actually? Yeah. Get a video reel going. <sighs> and then get edit sponsored. it. Sponsor. Yeah. Get sponsored. No, <laughs> get Chris to edit it. Do you think it's possible okay. to get really, like, that good at skateboarding if you're starting at, like, 20 years old? Yeah. It's hard, for sure. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to get sponsored. I'm well, didn't, like, Morgan Freeman get into acting when he was, like, 45? He was pretty 45? old. No, he There's was, a few actors. I don't like know that. how old. Maybe he was younger. But he was, for getting into acting, he was pretty That's there. interesting. I was thinking about shit being too late. Iconic, but. man. Yo. Never too late. Uh, Charles Bradley. True. 70 year old who just oh, got his first de- like music deal and album. Was that the guy Wayne was talking about? Yeah, yeah. he's so good. True. That's yeah. wild. J.K. Rowling. She True. wrote She wrote the first Harry Potter she one. Was she was a broke ass like, motherfucker. Yeah, and she was like 40, 40 something, mid 40s. Don't lose hope. No, my mom's writing a book right now. Oh. That yeah, should be interesting. Fiction? Uh, w- fiction Fake. is e- okay. Yeah, uh, it's like she says it's like kind of autobiographical. Raising thuggish Caillou. Yeah, <laughs> it was tough. It was really tough. Damn. No, but she's. It's like the concept of you having memories that pass through DNA, and like she's doing it. So there's some chapters are in the perspective of someone who's living in the modern day and then someone who's living in like 18 something in Ireland. And then they have like the same that visions and memories. Cool. It's super interesting. That's I was cool, like, yeah. damn, you got to get writing. You just, I hope you're not just talking about this. Yeah. That's fucking interesting. God <coughs> bless her. So what happened this week? Nothing. I don't know. I had a lot of shit. I just can't talk about it. What? It's very personal shit that happened. Oh my god. Mm. Say it's it. It's because it's You're not about it. me. I'm not. Okay, well other then don't name any names. I I'm not gonna say shit. Then why bring it up? But you got it. Give us a story. You know what? I did not did sleep a lot. I didn't myself. Why must you be so What the fuck? <laughs> You're just, you just holding it now. <laughs> I did not learn anything. For Why those not? of you but who I are not, not watching not the video sleep. version of this podcast, <laughs> he just knocked over his mic stand. I fucked up. <laughs> no, I... Did you learn anything from it? I didn't, no. Did someone learn uh, something from it? Uh, By you repeating the story, could someone learn something from it? Uh, Probably not, no. Why not? I think that's lies. Yeah, he is a fucking <laughs> I think that's bullshit, but you don't have to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. No. <laughs> well, it's his podcast, so. Uh, you asked me, did stuff happen? I said, yeah, shit happened. Should have said nothing. <laughs> you know what? I don't like to lie, which is a yeah, lie, but, busy. you know. <laughs> I try not to. <clears throat> I don't pay enough attention in day-to-day life to know what's going on this week, so. Yeah, Can't other say. than there hasn't, for myself, there hasn't been much going Jesus on. Christ. Just <laughs> not sleeping. Yeah, I was at a barn wedding. It was pretty hype. How was that? that Did you get drunk? Hard. Nah. I might take off my shirt. Yeah, I'm fucking cooking, dude. Yeah, I did that last time. It was pretty gay. Hey, that's fine. Yes. It was really gay. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm, it's a description, man. <laughs> it's not derogatory. <laughs> no, it was definitely gay. So what were you up to this week, Lynn Evan? Jerking it. This week. <laughs> You're so right, Derek. <laughs> there was a day where I jerked off like four times. You know, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but then I feel bad about it. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, you have like you have you know five minutes saying? of clarity after that you're like, what the fuck Bro, did I just jerk off to? the like, realist moment ever in a man's <laughs> life. Every decision, every decision you should make should come after you come. Like, uh, you should jizz and be like, okay, I need to decide now. Like, <laughs> the realest moment. Like, everything else you do will life. be decided by your dick. Like, it's awful. That is a moment of clarity. The, <laughs> the, the clouds have parts. opened up. <laughs> uh, Derek for president? Frig. I mean, he probably did a better 2020? job. 2020? Yeah, 2020. 2020 for present? He can't be present. 
True. It's Canadian. Obama you know wasn't what? born in America, yeah, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's you're your sorry. birth certificate? And we just, what a fucking idiot. We discovered Trump was from Quebec, actually. So, like, because he, oh, he says huge the same as Simon does. It's huge. 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 That's why Joey has that shirt. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that shirt every time I see that. I, huge mistake. I was like, why the fuck? Like, what is this a reference to? And now I know. <laughs> Me too. So I was trying to funny. figure like, that out. It can either be Trump or making fun of Quebecers. It's perfect. I it's either or is a fine. Trump shirt. Yeah, I love it. It definitely is a Trump shirt. Because it says huge yeah. mistake. Oh, yeah. Huge mistake. <laughs> yeah. You are <laughs> fake news. <laughs> I was thinking Bernie Sanders too, though. No, what, it's been about the same thing. <laughs> he did, they say the exact Yeah, they're both, they're both from, from like, New York. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah, okay. It was a tough election season for Bernie person. Yeah, God bless. I know, man. That was a sad day. When I when he lost so. the race, I was like, we're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, straight up. Yeah. That's the true true. <coughs> let's not talk about politics. That's all I've been talking let's about. Let's just for like, shit on Evan. Like, yeah. Not literally. <laughs> but, but. Yeah. I'm glad you had to clarify that. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure people... Like, will... I don't want to kink shame, but... Like, <laughs> kink shaming it, is not, my kink. It's not <laughs> one of my things. You know? Take yeah. that HGWs. I'm not oh, about those Cleveland one? steamers. What about the Jamaican Hot Pocket? I don't know what that is. I know what a Jamaican <laughs> Hot Box is. <laughs> Why did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Fug eggs D. <sighs> Shit. Okay, let's... Another brewski. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Mine's the LCBO on the right. Grab either drink. Yeah, can you grab one for me, too? <laughs> oh, it's Just a Cedre. Mine's Mexicans the one on say. the left. Cool. Would you get a black fly shit? Yeah. Hey, you like that? That's, that's not bad, actually. I okay. loved fucking girly... I, I love girly drinks. Bro, they taste good. They, they do. do. Like, what's, yeah, like, but you're also a white good. girl. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, those, you guys. They're way worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, let's get, let's get on guys. to Bernie. I want to talk about Bernie. I'm, I'm not a big politics, dude. Bro, uh, Bernie, Bernie is a dumbass. Bernie versus The Rock, dude. Oh, my God. What This shit's turning into a joke. Celebrities, <laughs> celebrities uh, shouldn't be able to okay, run. Okay, so it's The Rock and... Is The Rock Democratic? Tom Hanks? Because I know Tom Hanks Tom was Hanks. doing Do vice... He, hey. Apparently, I don't know if this was a joke, but he was, like, doing vice no, president... No, 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 no! Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fuck. Jesus Christ. My, my brother I does that, too. We were joking about that the other day. Like, like oh, God. Um, ah. I love doing it to people who are like, bottle don't. with his teeth. That's oh. amazing. Your reaction was so good. I love when I know no, people no, no. that don't know I can do it, and then like they're like, ah. Uh, okay, I but no uh, one should do it. Yeah. Was that <laughs> cra- one of these times I'm gonna chip a tooth. Yeah, but. Was it supposed to be The Rock and Tom Hanks as his vice president? Oh, Tom. Or, okay, because this and is, is this a joke? Bullshit. Look at me. Okay, I am I the president know. now. It he feels like it. a joke. I feel like I uh, hope it's a joke. Was it The Rock and Tom Hanks though? Because I know Tom Hanks was talking about VP. Or there was that whole thing about it, but <laughs> I don't know who it was with. I know he said something on some stupid fucking talk I, show. I feel like it was The Rock. It that was The Rock. Who okay. said, he announced, he's like, 2020. And Tom Hanks, the VP. Is he serious about I hope I not. don't know. I he hope. just said it once, and is, it was on is the Rock like American? Stephen Colbert. Yeah. 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 Is he he's like Samoan. Hawaiian? Simone? Yeah, Simone. He's also Canadian? Dude. Well, like, he I was think born. So. I don't know if he was born in be- Samoa, but he is Samoan. I think he was born in America. <laughs> you have to be born in America, Samoan. right? Yeah. You gotta be a... Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely do. You can't be I hope him. him and the Kanye one is also a joke. Oh, Kanye would be great. I don't know, man. Some... It'd be too dumb to do anything important, so they'd be fine. Some things are gonna have to fucking change. I when don't it know, comes man. To you, well, I think America is at the point where they what? would... I mean, they've elected Donald Trump. Is this the falling of Rome? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Canada's going down with it, then, like, fuck. 90% of our population is within, like, two hours of the border. Yeah, yeah that's very true. We yeah, got Justin Trudeau. What do you guys think about Justin Trudeau? Do you guys follow it? 
I I, honestly, again, I pay I'm, more attention to American politics. I'm not in the politics, so I don't pay attention. I dig them. Like, our country doesn't seem like total shit. I think it's important shit, to so pay attention to. I should be. I yeah. know that, yeah. Yeah, I want to, but... During elections... Sorry. Every time I'm like, what's going on in Canadian politics? I see a story about American politics. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck. I see ah! Donald Trump. Like, blah, blah, blah. I don't Fox think News. Trudeau's huh? been good either way, but it's like, he just makes us look really fucking good right now. Like, everyone <laughs> fucking <laughs> loves He it. doesn't fuck That's up as true. much as Trump if yeah. he is fucking up, so... Yeah. But, like... During elections, I do, like, I'll research the different people, but yeah. any other time, I just don't pay attention. You know the NDP? Yeah. Someone who just ran for the leadership of the NDP. I his voted name is... for Tom McClare. Oh, did you? Yeah. Fuck Tom McClare. Uh, what was his name? I never was John... good mustache as Leo. Jack Layton? Jack, Jack Layton. Layton. Oh, that guy yeah. was the shit. Oh, he was the shit. If he, he didn't was, die, if he, he would have gone all the way there. Yeah. Crazy. The young death. A yeah. fucking, but this guy who's running for the NDP leadership, Omar something, and he's got a turban. Oh, fuck. That'd be interesting. Hype. Crazy. Imagine. Would that be the first, like, non white prime minister? Uh, Probably. Probably. Yeah. I don't think yeah, it's going to no, happen, right. but. I don't know if it would either. I don't but it'd be, think, how crazy would that be? I think. That'd be a turn of events. I'd be about that. If I don't know. Good, cool, but if he, yeah, I, he's got good policies. I don't yeah. see. I see enough people being like, "Oh, he has a turban. I'm not voting for him." Well, we need I like a like can going too, to which really sucks. Well, yeah, exactly. That's, That's what I'm saying. I can also see a couple people being like, "I'm gonna vote for him just because of." Uh, like diversity. Yeah, no, yes. that's true. But and that maybe he won't terrible. be the best. Right? Do, you, do you think the other side outweighs that though? I do. Uh, sadly, yeah. it's because there's our well, healthcare the, is too good and keeps people I've alive. I've been surrounded <laughs> as more <laughs> as that is. Like, I've been like I've seen a lot of that in Canada. What? Like a lot of the the social racism, justice warriors no, or the, the racism, racism towards either like Sikh and Muslim people and putting them as one mm-hmm. religion pretty much yeah cause I'm pretty sure he's Sikh he is if he wears a turban that's a Sikh thing yeah 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 and but it's it, we can't we always like to think we're the fucking good guys but there is just well, as no much country, racism no yeah. country is the good guy no. hey you're right it's no, just countries like, full of great it's people it's weird cause I went to like I told you last podcast, I went to a school where it was mainly like Middle Eastern people, <coughs> and all the people, all, not up? all, a lot of the people that were like white and shit were still super racist towards them, even though we are the minority. Weird, weird. Have a majority complex. We are the most culturally diverse country in the world. Uh, are, we? are we? Toronto is the most diverse. A city in the entire world because of Pierre Trudeau. Interesting. He was yeah. all he let that makes sense. He let though, the borders yeah. open for everyone. And my parents were always like, "Fucking, I hate Pierre Trudeau because he let the floodgates open of all the immigration." <laughs> I'm like, "Yo, uh, um, Toronto yeah. it, it, has some yeah, great but, fucking food." Toronto does have some great co- oh my fucking god yeah. food. Scarborough man. Think about think about all cool. the culture that's coming out of Toronto too. Drake is the biggest pop oh my star god, in yeah. the entire world, like one of them anyway. Yeah. And, like, that's the culture. Weekend. Like, the weekend, Justin Bieber. Like, uh, Canada in general, like, we're, like, a fucking entertainment well, powerhouse. Beebs, like, 100%. culture powerhouse. Jay yeah. Beebs isn't out of Toronto, though. But Close he's, people probably would be like, oh, he's from Toronto. Nobody also, knows Also, party next is. door, close enough. Yeah, he's not that. Saga he's not as City. big as, as those motherfuckers. He's getting up there now. He's getting there, but he's not quite. No, he's, he's on the rise, the though, for sure. Trouble. I don't think he'll ever get there. I hope so. He's gonna be a ghost rider in the OVO sweatshop. I can see him more as a ghost rider, yeah. Because like he's one of my favorites out of Canada. Well, in general, but of the pop star people. I don't like him. Have you seen him live? Yeah, I saw him for Drake's tour before. Actually, before he got up. No, he can sing. He can. When I saw him, he was great. When I saw him at OVO Fest, he could not sing. I saw him, it was shit. It was the fucking, like, when Nothing uh, Was the Same, that tour, when that album came oh, out. Oh, true. You saw that tour? Yeah. That's I, sick. He was the opener. No one was there. It was, like, me, my cousin, and some other people. My cousin hey. was like, yo, this dude <coughs> is fucking dope. And that, I agreed with him. That's sick. Yeah, I haven't seen I need to go back to... I need to go to a concert. I haven't been to a concert in so long. Yeah. Oh, Mike's. 
Yeah. Like show. Well, he was his band is really fucking good. Yeah, yeah. what do you guys think about that? <clears throat> about what? I mean, about I Mike getting signed. That's I'm pretty sick. happy for him because his band's fucking good. I'm wearing their band shirt right yeah, now. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, Wayne in class, he's like, oh, I like your shirt. I'm like, yeah, their band's fucking good. That's sick, dude. I tried to talk to him about it. He didn't really give me any he's, any sweet deal, sweet uh, he's, details. Doesn't tend to talk like, about himself. No. God bless. He's a very humble dude. He is a very humble dude. Yes. It'd be just interesting if they imagine if Mike Bond started touring the world. Like he's uh, that'd be pretty sick. They already signed. Is there a record deal international yeah, tour? Yeah. 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 yeah, he is going like, to Europe. <coughs> I want to know how the hell they did it. Like, but Europe? They don't have any content before they got this record deal, right? They just like, they had a four EPs. Oh, I they think? did have EPs. Okay, but they were very low. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, because I couldn't find them. Yeah, and they just got the record deal off being good, I guess. I yeah, guess. they really just gotta are, get and good. they're, they're good performers great, yeah. too. Like, yeah. it was hard to see because we had a bunch of tall people in well, front. They're right? actually and House of Targa is two fucking pillars. Yeah, right there. they're actually and better live. Like yeah, they're Holy. better live than on the album. That's fine. Cause yeah. it's way better that way. Yeah, yeah when exactly. I got like glimpses of Mike and stuff, he was he was rocking. He was rocking he's out. A ba- he's a bassist. Yes. Yeah. The baser. People love the music in Europe, though. True. Like you go metal like, is is it's, it's, it's Europe. Right? No, general, it's just though. Europe. Yeah, it's just Europe. You go yeah. hip hop, motherfuckers. Yeah. Like KRS One. Like these people. Message are... Man spoke out about it. He's it, like they. They're all still the touring. They only tour Europe because that's where they sell out shows. It partly has to do. I know Method Man talked about it yeah. with the like American superstar kind of people and yeah. Canadian is because. Since they're in a different continent, they don't get as much of those people. So when they do come, it's like, fuck yeah. Like, we got these guys come into our country. But it's like all, they love the music. There's a different affinity they have for the music than we have here. There's more culture there, though. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a longer. What do you mean more culture? There's more uh, history of music and that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because we, our culture is from. A Sorry. lot, or at least started off. What do you mean, uh, more fucking <coughs> music? More music. History. Canada hasn't been around for that long, right? Yeah. 150. And our traditions come from other countries. That's, for that's that what we emigrate. Yeah, say. that's exactly what yeah. John's saying. Our culture is cultural appropriation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Europe has had like thousands of years of traditions and culture of music and festivals and all that sort of shit. You know what I'm saying? So you think it's just hereditary? <laughs> Maybe. But I also think, like John was saying, North well, America... I was well, just going to say that, like, what he said was what I was going to say next, was that we are cultures from other people coming over here. And but what, taking but wouldn't that be the same thing, then? But Wouldn't that, the, if they're coming over here, wouldn't they have the, the same affinity the for the music? The other thing that? is we have, like, three countries, like Canada, U.S., yeah. Mexico. Yes. Whereas they have a whole ton of countries. But how does that relate to their love for music? They have, well, with the culture thing I'm talking about, they yeah. have so many more cultures because of all these countries. Oh, yeah, and like geography wise, like I can't hop on a train to Vancouver and see a festival. Whereas like yeah, if I'm in true. England, I can just hop on the tube and go to England or <laughs> go to Germany. So true. <laughs> exactly. You know, for that's like fucking true. metal fest. And then that is hell fest, true. excuse me. You can get anywhere in Europe in a day on a train, right? <laughs> man, I want to travel so bad. Oh my God. I, yeah, know. Oh. I, want, I looked at your apartments in the UK. I'm like, fuck, that's so expensive. Yeah, like, how much is it? Like, it's like rent on like a shitty apartment is like, I don't know, like seven to 800 like euro or whatever, or whatever they're pounds, doing now, yeah. pounds. But like that's that, fucking expensive. That like so translates like 1, to like fifteen hundred, right? That's yeah. sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah, like it, it's like is it's it two stupid. times? I thought it was one point six. It's around. That was I know. 1. 6 uh, or 1. 7. Maybe once it's Brexit goes in times. like the full swing, it'll yeah, drop. Yeah, I think it's but, almost two times. Yeah, they're like it's just like because, it's not yeah. affordable coming out of like college by any means. No, one hundred percent. And like you have to have like work going into it or else you're gonna be fucked. And then when if you're planning to stay over there for more than six months, you have to pay property taxes in yeah. the other country. So that just adds even more. You have to pay. Taxes that is to be moving there. to most countries. You kind of have to have a job going. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, you because that's how concern. my one half of my family came to Canada was because it's like you can either get do this job. I think it was. <laughs> Some car thing, I think. Some my car grandpa, thing. my grandpa, it was either you could Detroit, go Rock to City. Tasmania in Australia or London in Canada, and he chose London. Oh, Australia true. is pretty nice. The same. 
Yeah, I'd love to. Well, I don't know. I haven't been out of the continent. So when did the, you're saying your grandpa did that or your parents did my that? My grandpa. My so mom, he's an immigrant? My mom's from Canada. Yeah, my dad's an immigrant. So too. your parents are like first generation or your mom's first generation born here and then... Yeah, my mom is born like in London as I was. My dad was born in Norwich, England. See, why don't Damn. motherfuckers get that? I bet the majority of us are like that. What do you mean? The majority of motherfuckers who say, oh, fuck immigration. Yeah. Yes. Their parents are, <laughs> yeah. their grandparents are That's why I can't immigrants. shit on anything. Most of my family are immigrants. Yeah. Well, my, my grandparents are. to you, right? Yeah, like, I'm the exactly. first, I'm the first, well, my aunt was born in Canada, though, so, like, I'm technically second generation, but yeah. who cares? I'm, I'm second generation. Very too. closely related to immigrants. Yeah, my well, dad's like, from Ireland. Yeah. Britain. Your, dad, your dad is? Yeah. So he immigrated here. And yeah. your mom's from when? Quebec, so she yeah. immigrated too. For, yeah. <laughs> Gross. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, French Canadians are like, the worst type of Yeah, no. <laughs> pretty <laughs> much anyone that's not like a native of here is descended from an immigrant. So. No, exactly. Especially the, like, the past two generations. So your dad, did your grandparents move here? No, they're still in Ireland. But when did your dad move here? When he was like 20-something, I think. Oh, that's wild. So does he have an Irish accent? A little bit. That's He's sick. lost it over the years, yeah, though. True, yeah. And yeah, would, that's would the claim. same. My dad's the same way because he moved early <coughs> in his life. How old so was he when he moved here? He was like not even 10 yet. True. So, like, so he his had an accent, moved, yeah. but he quickly lost the, it. The yeah. thing about my dad's accent is that if you didn't know the Irish accent, you wouldn't pick it up. But every time he meets an Irish person, they're like, See, okay. You got an accent? He's like, oh, My yeah. stepdad is <laughs> so great with my stepdad. He's from, like, Trinidad. And he lost his accent except for, like, certain times. Like, if he starts talking for a lot and he gets really passionate, his accent comes back and it's the That's funniest That's so funny. Thing. Yes. Trinidad. <laughs> <laughs> Some things, man. <laughs> He'll say brush. Cultural like, appropriation. I've heard him say before to, like, my stepbrothers, he's like, oh, go brush your teeth. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so good. Bad accent, but yeah, you no, get we it. Get it. <laughs> Bear can. Great. What about dude, your though. great dude. parents or grandparents? Uh, I think my grandparents are both first generation on both sides. So their grandparents immigrated here. My great grandparents. Oh, their great grandparents. Yeah, so I'd be third generation born Canada. True. Where are they from? Uh, mostly England. Yeah, true. And then like a little bit of a little bit of Scottish, <laughs> Scottish. Well, the Scottish. Ross name comes from Scotland. Oh, uh, true. I don't want my voice to speak there. But so, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like all English, and then the, like one Scottish guy was like, my name dominates all. So crazy. <laughs> Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm like very far back French, but it's so far back. My fucking grandparents on my dad's side, they were like refugees. They came Damn. here during World War Two. They're from Germany. Oh, right. yeah, and they were Nazis, so they had they right. had to get out of they there. They had to they get the fuck bombed. out. Respect to them. Yeah, I know. I really want to have a conversation. You kind of look a little Aryan. <laughs> <laughs> I apparently I, had a family I member. Like, okay. <laughs> 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 I <laughs> see it was like when you fucking did the beer cow with this. No. <laughs> Why though? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Oh, I, was, I apparently that. had a. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> Accidentally. Uh, I apparently had a family member that was in a concentration camp because they were like Ooh. French resistance. So, what do you mean they were in a concentration camp? They died? They in got it? out of it, Holy but then they're shit. dead now. That's wild, dude. Is that Sam? New phone, it is. I mean, what's up, Sam? <laughs> Actually? Yeah. We are laughing pretty loud. I'm yeah, we're back. Yeah, we're back. What were we talking about? What were I don't we remember. About? I don't remember uh, either. We were talking about... No, new conversation. Parent. Fuck off, John. Okay. New <laughs> conversation. Yeah. Last false. thing I remember was like Hitler shit. False humility. So yeah, yeah, I made a fucking white supremacist joke. Yeah. And that was not okay. <laughs> Evan crossing the line. When does that oh, not happen? I remember this one time. Who are we... I, I was playing um, Fibbage or something, or oh. Quiplash mm. with Tyler. Oh. What's Quiplash? 
it's this game where you have to it gives you a prompt and you have to come up with the funniest answer you can think of. It's yeah. kind of like Cards Against Humanity, yeah. except you play like on your phone on the computer. And like, you don't have set answers. You can just put whatever the fuck you want. I know I was playing with Tyler. I can't remember who else was there. But the I board answered, game? I answered, well, that one was one, but there was another one. I answered Mein Kampf to an answer. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. I was there. I can't, <laughs> so what, I can't remember the prompt, I but then Tyler was like, what's that? And we were like. Oh, God. Read a book, Tyler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sweet, sweet I don't Tyler. Know. Oh, Tyler. So, uh, what have y'all going from the right to the left for me? What have you learned this year? You know what? That's a good conversation we can have because it's almost over. It True. is almost over. What have you learned in the past twelve months? I think the most valuable things I've learned, yeah, aren't necessarily related to the program. Oh shit. And Me more neither, related dude. to Hashtag. myself and how I fit into the world and with other people. 100%. I definitely agree with that. I think that's the point of being in school. And now, all, all the new experiences I had because so, I've never been this social in my life. I've never had this big of a nerd. social group. Even though ever. I'm a nerd, so I can't take a shit. <laughs> No, it's it's not that. It's just we did. All right, fucking Nathan knocked at the plug. Okay, fucking sorry. Nerd. Yeah, it's all my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this drunk idiot. Oh okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what'd you learn? Well, as I just said, uh, most important stuff about myself, like, um, I don't, I don't like how I, like I said, I've never had this many friends before. I've never had relationships with so many people at the same time before. You cheater. Slut. So it's yeah, like... You're fucking home. Yeah, friendship <laughs> slut. <laughs> so it's like, I've never been in this situation, so looking back on how I... Oh, that was you. ...handled it. <laughs> that was and like and I copied him. grew from it and came to understand myself better by being in this position that I've never been in before was probably the biggest thing I've learned all year. So how do you, how, are you like comparing yourself right now to where you were two years ago or? Yeah. Or like one year ago. So how'd you get to that point? How'd I get to this? Yeah. How'd you get to the point where you said you weren't very social or whatever, you know, you didn't, how, how did you make that transformation in yourself? I think that, that from? came from becoming really I don't know if I'd say totally, but really comfortable with myself. And Wearing that snuggy in your soul. That's why yeah. I look up to you, dude. It's a beautiful oh, metaphor. One hundred percent. That's like that's something I see in you that I envy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't give a fuck about none. No, <laughs> it, but you do give a fuck, right? Well, yes. Yeah, it's, it's not like you don't give a fuck, but you're just so comfortable. It doesn't even matter. No, you, it, someone could say anything to you, and it doesn't even matter. I'm not afraid to like fuck up and see and have people see him fuck up. Right? One hundred percent. I really want like, that's to you now. <laughs> after saying that, cool well, story, right, John. Right now, I, it'd be so I said hot, that though. Nathan has a snuggie on his soul, and then I'm like, I kind of <laughs> want a snuggie right now. <laughs> yeah, but that comes stressed. from years of being anxiety ridden and depressed, and so there's hope for hating my life. <laughs> oh, Derek Rip. We'll get there. It's more like I became so sick of not Ow. being comfortable with myself that I was like, "Fuck that." Well, I guess this that. is me. Because you, you, had, you, I think everyone. It'd be sad if not everyone reached their fuck it point, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like for me, I still like got a long way to go, but like I reached my fuck it point a while ago, and it's just like <laughs> there's certain things I was like, "Okay, I can do it." Like, oh, fucking Gary Clark Jr. needs a set list. Ooh, okay, I'll just walk damn. over to him. I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like you just just do things and like Great fake condition. confidence until you're actually confident. One hundred percent, you gotta fake it till you make it. And yeah, you know, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they were talking about confidence. Mm -hmm. And it's like confidence is overrated. Yeah, we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I believe that is overrated. Mm -hmm. Courage is really the point at where you're gonna make the change. If you have enough courage to walk up to Gary Clark Jr., that's where you'll gain the confidence in life. Yeah, if you're if you have the ability to be able to fuck up in front of people and have the humility that you have now that is what's gonna get you to that confident point in life be humble yeah. bitch sit down <laughs> yeah, I was like uh, today in class like 
Brian Benson, like he was doing some things on the board and he was unsure. And like really Steve, good dude. Yeah, Brian is great. Like great guy. He knows a lot. He's really good with big things. guy. Yeah, yeah, tall, yeah, yeah, tall yeah, yeah, Brian, not Brian Stern. Yeah, fuck that yeah. guy. Um, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, fuck we'll cut that. that. <laughs> but um, no, but like Steve's really cryptic about his like you know he'll try to teach you, but like he wants you to explore and learn, and like Brian gets really frustrated with that, and like he could just tell he was like he was so naked in front of the class. Yeah. Like he just felt so uncomfortable screwing up in front of everyone. It's like no man, make your mistakes here. Like yeah. everyone here, like. Like, it's fine with it. Like, but fuck it's not, up. It's, it's not just that, though. It's, for me, anyways, I used to be like that, as in, oh, God, I can't do this in front of other people because I care too much about what they think. Yeah. But I've reached the point where it's like, you know, what they think doesn't really matter. And is it not often that you <sighs> create the anxiety within your own head, you create exactly. that false narrative well, of, oh, if I fuck up, like, it's over for yeah, me. Yeah, that's like, assumptions. No. Well, most 100%. of the time, they probably, like, they don't even remember it or they don't e- they didn't even think about you. Like No, right? exactly. What? Who are you to say that everyone's thinking about you? Exactly. I think that's ego as well, yeah. 100%. Insecurity is ego. It's like sort of a... You hold yourself a little higher than... No, exactly. It's like the, the most insecure people are the ones with the biggest egos because like you're too worried about what other motherfuckers are thinking about you and uh-huh. they really aren't thinking about you. Yeah. There's a part that it's like you really got to figure out that no one's watching you. You're yeah. the only person watching yourself and you create those exactly. narratives within your brain. Damn. Exactly. Kind of looked like you were trying to say that to me because you like looked over for a second and just... I was looking down. right at you, John. <laughs> Boy, think about that. Yeah, man. <laughs> think about that, John. <laughs> what do you? What did you learn this year, Derek Ross? I don't know. Not like just like I don't want to talk about the boring like technical stuff. Like yeah, as just as like a musician and like engineer and stuff. I mean that's a part of it though. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Like and like, you know, this kind of year has been like the start of the rabbit mm-hmm. hole. You've learned enough to know that you know nothing. Yeah, kind of like. We've all dipped our toe in mixing and dipped our toe in recording, but it's like yeah. we still have. We now know how much more we have to learn. A man is as, at his wisest as, when he admits he knows nothing. Yeah, it's very true. As the ocean of intelligence grows, so does the shore of ignorance. Yeah. Watching. Did you come up with that? No, I oh, definitely fuck. saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be here right now. Evan, Evan reads though. Just 100%. watching Steve mix the bird so quickly compared to what you think you would do. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's just different tools. But then you got to look at well, like, Steve he has is so much 50 years plus of years experience. Yeah, exactly. We're He's still... been mixing longer than we've been alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very true. I'm still not even sure what Steve does for a living other than teach. <laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> Teaches 12 hours a week. <laughs> He's, he's, true. yeah, true. he's, he's uh, a fucking love that guy. I love that guy too. I feel like he was an alcoholic back in the day. <laughs> I feel like he did a lot of psychedelics. Today. He seems like that kind of guy. He he does, maybe he still does. He went he through the ringer. Like I feel like he went he's, through the ringer. There was, yeah, 100%. He's out, you know how alcoholics get this like sort of shake that they have. True. Well, that's I always like, see all his the shake. gum. How he, he avoided you True. at the LCBO that one oh, time. Oh, all the mm-hmm. gum. Yeah. yeah. He avoided Halls you at the LCBO? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, this is uncovering more and more. I feel like Steve would be a great person to sit down at this podcast and like just like pull some stories out of. One hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Both. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that'd be very interesting. I always wanted like talk to steve because i feel like he would be he like i feel like he feels like he could talk to me and i really just i am not that comfortable enough to like (laughs) i think really talk to him like that you have to get him out of the classroom though because he's an old-fashioned guy i think and he's like you are my students yeah so i am your teacher kind of guy yeah that's very true if you like come early to your tuesday classes between like I, after ours he sits yeah. on the front steps and sits on his phone like if you just i'm sure if you sat beside him and just chatted like he'd be down like, i know i totally want to yeah. but i just get too uncomfortable like, i, don't I, know, what I know what you mean right yeah, it's like it's how do you break this, that initial yeah how do i break that ice and it's like i feel like he'd have some good stories i do just have a pack of halls on you big cherry halls or strawberry chai and gum yeah, literally. <laughs> so what did you learn did you what 
What did you learn about the dream you had? That's that, important. Ooh, that, that never dies. <laughs> that I need to move home and live rent free for a year to figure out what it is again. Like, yeah. Yeah. What do you well, mean? I don't know. It's like I always want to lean towards being an artist, but like, it's like every class tells you something different, right? It's like I just don't know what direction because I feel like I'm at a point where it's like. I could go in any direction I want to, but it's like I should choose one and get good at that. Yeah, well, like, you what's know? your dream though? What's the goal? What's your what's, right now? Yeah, it's not necessarily a goal as what necessarily what job to have, but it's to have a job that I'm flexible enough to live wherever I want. True. Like, what I want is like spend a year in Toronto, spend yeah. a year in the UK, spend a year in Australia, and yeah. still be able to keep my career. Like goals. You know, yeah, if that I is cool. if I'm like. If I can establish myself after, like, five years of work as, like, a mixer, then anyone... I can move anywhere. Yeah. And anyone can send me files, and I can mix from anywhere, right? Yeah. So, I think right now, that's the tentative. Actually, the dream. Did, did, <laughs> your, goals, did your mindset, did your goals and dreams change since September to now? I think so, yeah. I think coming in, I was still leaning towards, like, doing music with my cousin, and, like, we were going to have a band, but it's, like, looking at it, it's, like, I, we're still going to make music, and, like, this whole next year is going to be, like, we're going to record an album and stuff, and it's going to be fun, but it's, just like, I don't know how realistic it is, like, neither, like, he's in school for er, archaeology, and it's, like, yeah. you got to dive head first, That's right? That's the thing, You're, I, I heard you say lean towards being an artist, but yeah. it's, like, you can't lean towards anything. Mm -hmm. You got to take that fucking step over. It's one of those things, I'm still not at the point where I feel comfortable, like, like, I would always want to have another job. I wouldn't dive into being an artist, but, like, you got You'd it, want to right? have some stability, yeah. So. No, you list all these stories about motherfuckers living on couches for years. Yeah. Before then. And that's, like, that's the point where you have to figure out what yeah. your goals actually are. Well, that's why what? I'm going back to my parents on the 20th. So, like, 19 days from now, I'm going to be back in... Well, not even back into my hometown. Like, I'm yeah. moving to a new city because my parents moved to Aurelia. Oh, true. So, Aurelia. Yeah. Yo, I no should go there for never. orthodontist appointments. <laughs> 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 that is, it's I relevant. It. Um, yeah, but it's like, live on the couch. That's like, it's actually become a standard for our generation to be back on our parents. Yeah. And like, you look at, yeah. historically speaking, it's not that weird. Like, post-World War II was like the first few generations that were like, okay, I'm 18, I'm out of the house. Like, before World War I, World, like, the w Great Wars... Before the economy, you had all the baby boomers and this great fucking rush. Like, it was normal to have, like, three generations in one roof, right? Like That's true. So, it's like, there's, That's like, true. our generation is scared to move home. But it's like, my sister never fucking left home. Yeah. She's now working at a job for the OPP, making $30 an hour. Yeah. With fully approved overtime. Yeah. So, like, she, like, gets, like, $45 an hour for the overtime she works. She's, like, Frick. had a carb payment plan for five years and she's going to be done it in a year like and she's going to skip the rental phase have a down payment on a house like God like dang. there's no problem like going home and that's right now that's the dream for me oh <laughs> i just i just don't think i could do it i know what you mean because it's it's so like it depends on your parents relationship with you but Very it's like true yeah it's like i can't we can just shoot the shit smoke a joint and drink a few beers and do this podcast <laughs> in my parents basement right no, it's exactly. very confining. And it's like we who, could at mine, but <laughs> fuck, God bless. not mine. Sca but I may have to go to Scarborough. So <laughs> it's also Whoa. like you are very influenced by the people you're around, and it's like I've hit that point, and I've learned so much mm -hmm. in the past year from being away from my parents mm -hmm. that I don't want to be influenced by them anymore. I feel that. I feel that. There needs to be a new, and I'm talking, my buddy just moved back in with his mom, Ooh. and four months later, he's like, I got to move out. Like, I need that struggle. I need that urgency. I need that that uncomfortableness uh -huh. of not living with your parents. I need to be so, uncomfortable right now, because yeah. that's the only way that I'm going to grow. Oh, yeah. It's also where you live. No offense to Muskoka, but no, one hundred percent. But I don't think country, I, my man, mom's moving back here in Ottawa, and I'm not. I don't want to live with her. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's just not. I can't be. I I love you, mother. I'd love yeah. to talk to you on the phone for an hour. Like, but I don't want to live with you. I can't be influenced by. I your, understand what you're saying, man. Yeah, it's it's a but different it's, thing. It's also about how far along each person is on their journeys, right? Because mm -hmm. I am at a such a different place than my parents are, right? 
the things that I care about and the things that I want to do do not align with my yeah. parents because we're just different parts yeah. of our journeys. Hey, don't touch. Don't talk politics with your parents. I do. I do. I don't uh, agree I with avoid it. my parents a hundred percent, but I understand their opinions. Yeah. No, I I talk with them too, my parents, but like my I think my parents really help me understand having an open mind and having conversation. Yeah. I I, tell my parents almost everything. Yeah. I definitely don't. Like, if they knew I fucking smoked weed and shit. (laughs) I mean, they probably guess. Nathan's a good boy. (laughs) God bless you. (laughs) What about you, John? What have you learned this past year? Makes sense. No. Uh, well, yeah, right, yeah, that's boring, dude. You uh, have a very shallow. Get the life. fuck out! <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what did I learn? Oh, I learned a lot. I'm just where to start. What's the most important thing that you learned? Yeah, that's, I don't know. You know what I've actually learned very recently in the past like two weeks. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking more towards the, like, settling down kind of move rather than, like, what Derek was saying, like, moving Interesting. to England, moving to somewhere else in Canada, moving to America, whatever. Uh-huh. I'm thinking more just sticking to one spot. That's interesting because you always said that you like... Getting a good old wifey, maybe not kids, but <laughs> dogs, yeah, that. getting dogs. Double. Please don't call your dogs your children. Though. I won't. Oh, Do- fuck. Thank you. Dogs I are won't. kids on easy mode. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love dogs. I do too. But yeah, give me kitty. That's interesting to hear you say. I've been... It's like What'd the past, past two weeks. Okay, since you had to leave. Sorry, dude. Uh, <laughs> he wants to settle down. He's Pretty getting much, old and wants to settle down. The okay, last so what do you mean two, you want to settle the down? The last two... I'll I'll just roughly say two weeks. I've been leaning more towards that. I don't know why. What do you mean? But by you settling do down, you, no, okay, hey, no, no, hey, hey, hey. I'm about you to, to extrapolate. That okay, thought. I mean like settling in like one spot, and like you know maybe wife. I don't know about kids still, but like reset your zero. Yeah, like I was more thinking towards what Derek was saying, like moving here, moving there, blah blah blah. But I before I. Like, very recently, even, it was more like moving around, no wife, no kids. I don't know about the kids still, but... Okay, so you just had some scatterbrain thoughts there. What I'm is sorry, your... that's a lot. What did... You say you want to settle down, or you don't? I'm saying I'm think leaning more towards that But what is settling lifestyle. down to you? To me, it's, like, sticking more towards one city or one area. Yeah. You know, really concrete your network and stuff. Yeah, like having you know, having a community around you. Wife, maybe kids. Wife, Wife. dogs at least, or dogs. at least one dog. <laughs> at least one dog. Do you do you ever dream about being married? Not you ever really think no. about it a lot. I'm dreaming Not of marrying really. Because I feel like we don't have very many conversations about relationships with the other sex, to be totally honest with no, you. No, we don't really. No. Because we're all fucking losers. Um, <laughs> very true. I, I, very true. <laughs> I didn't really say much last podcast about that stuff. Yeah, you didn't. We were going, we were going into uh, it a little bit. Were we? Okay. I'll take your word for it. Well, what what drunk, did you say I was kind of drunk last time. <laughs> What did you, I was gonna say something I forgot. What did you say before we don't talk about relationships? Something. What do you mean about settling down? Like, what does that mean to you? Oh, okay. I said that stuff. Pretty much what I said. Just kind of a network in this but area. Why, why is that attractive that. to you? I don't, I don't know. Honestly, it's just kind of I'm thinking I want to just like stick to one spot, establish myself there. To stay th- like obviously I'm going to travel. I I love traveling. Yeah, but but why why do you want to do that? I honestly couldn't tell you. I'm I think just, you could though. No, like I'm being serious. I don't know why that seems more attractive to me. I can now. see like there's like there's something about consistency. Yeah, it's, like predictability is nice. It depends. Not, on... It's not really predictability because like I want to kind of do lots of different stuff, but in that area. So like. I could be like, say, mixing, doing a bunch of mixing here, you know, doing uh, f- 
just say I was like sponsored skateboarder, although I'm not planning for that and I don't really want it. Yeah. But just different kind of areas. To to go apart from that, sorry to digress. That's cool. But fucking, I was listening to this podcast, this Joe Rogan podcast a couple months ago, and this guy named Dan Pena, he's a fucking oil tycoon, and he's Ooh. just some super successful, quote unquote successful money guy. I don't know if I've told you this, told you this before, but I'm he's not had, sure. He's had three regrets in life. Oh yes, I heard this. And his first regret was not believing that his mother was sick. Oh yeah, you and told then, me that. And then his second regret, heavy. Th- heavy. And his second regret. So this guy is thinking about he's he's done everything. He has all the stories in the world. He has a wife. He has kids. He has it. And he says his second regret is not setting his goals high enough. Wow. Very interesting. It very puts it into perspective. Just going off that. Oh, I'm not a sign, but like. You, well, no, your- that's because for me that was just more of an example because I have gotten into skateboarding yeah, no, I but it. i don't but i saw you said i saw you doubt yourself in that moment no right like i actually bit. don't want to like i don't care about yeah. the whole it's getting not a time. i just want to skateboard because it's fun yeah it gets away some anger yeah mixing i have goals for that of <laughs> course well not just mixing engine music engineer as a whole yeah i have goals for that because that's one of the main things i want to do but like yeah that's to me, settling down in a short... It's just wanting to be in one place. It's... And wanting to have, like, steady relationships. Yeah. That kind of... I don't... I'm not... I find I'm more one who goes for those... When, since we're going to talk about relationships yeah. now, I go for the more... I'm going to be with this person for a while, or you're my friend. I want to stay friends for a while, and... Being in the same area will help with that, of course. You want to build on those relationships. Yeah. yeah. I feel that. Make feel it worthwhile. And like, right? 100%. I want to, I honestly wouldn't want to get all famous. Like, Oh, fuck no. I don't want to be that. It's not me, like, not want. Not wanting more low, but I don't want to be that big shop producer. Like, I'll just go with Metro Boomin, the guy who's like. A whole ton of people know all that. I want to kind of stay low key, like do my thing, you know, do what I love, yeah. but make enough to just and why pay is that? Rent. I just like a lot of times being to myself, kind of just. It's an anxiety filled thought, eh? Knowing that you have all this attention from all these people, it would be. I, bet. I feel yeah. like I'd be such an yeah. anxious person. Yeah, man. It'd be a gross feeling. I've definitely would. thought about that before. Yeah, I couldn't handle that shit. Couldn't I think that. I could handle it, but I don't think it'd be the the choice of life you'd want to live. And you look at Chester Bennington is so, his name, right? Yeah. Yes. But you look at, like, uh, so many people fiend that, right? Yeah. Like, so many people, not even just, I, I want to, like, go to our generation, but it's not even our generation. I'm yeah. sure this has been through many oh, generations. Yeah, Chester was, like, he's the generation after, or before us, right? He's not even a millennial. No, he's exactly, but people fiend to be, like, famous. And, like, once you reach that level of success, that's it. That's what's going to fulfill your heart and your soul. Mm. And then you look at these people who take their own lives at that point in their life. He was 42. He was at the peak. He, Six kids, peak. two wives, fucking and going on tour with still, one of the biggest rock bands. Still wasn't enough. And Chris Cornell, too. Right Chris before. Cornell. Fucking I, legendary. Fucking, I can't believe I'm forgetting the same. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain? Yeah. Bang. I said Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. You're thinking Kurt he Kurt swears Bang. he doesn't have a gun. Yeah, no, I was... I, I, Singer, I don't know, rapper, so, yeah. dude. But Kurt Cobain, it's like, it's an example of that life of fame, like you were talking about, that you don't want. It's like that shit's anxiety it's not filled. for me. For a regular person, look at Kanye West. It's That motherfucker's to going head. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's some real mental health that goes along with yeah. having that lifestyle. You just step down for a while, man. But, see, I don't agree with, I don't know if I want to settle down yet. It's not my time to settle down. I'm not saying right now. I'm just saying yeah. that's kind of a goal in, the, I'd say, near future for me, not yeah. now. I feel that. I feel that. But near future. That's one of the main things, and that's super recent for me. Yeah. 
It's been like what I, brought about that? I don't. Oh well, okay, I know. My me and my friend have talked about that because like they have wanted to for a while. So because they were talking about that, I got thinking about it. Uh huh. And that's where it got. Who's your friend? Is my your friend, friend a female? It is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Skirt. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. That's the one big thing, and then also just. How to word this? Think about it. My Ooh. can opener. <laughs> True. <laughs> Different kind of can from the. It's a can. Uh, it is. You're not. Wrong. Um, my. I guess my mentality on people talking <laughs> with them, all that kind of. I feel you. Like friendship relationship type things my whole mentality on that so just you, people in general do you really, really value relationships right now in your life N- no because i oh, really? pers- do you do you really are you do you feel like you need what like, i an mean intimate? by relationships not even just people that i'm friends with people that i'm dating whatever but just people that i talk to like it could be acquaintance acquaintances or whatever. <laughs> Good words. Just, Just people how, you have surrounded. Yeah, like I've talked atmosphere. with you two at least about how it's more changed with the whole I tend to not really want <clears throat> to talk about people I don't like because yeah. to me it's like I don't care about that person. I think you don't, that's, you don't I, take partner shit talking. It's pretty Yeah, well that's noble. a more recent kind of, not super you recent do. but like this year, that's kind a Royce of the five nine line, bro. Why you let a man live inside your head rent free? See, oh, I, I believe yeah, that kind wow. of shit, and he's a good rapper. No, exactly. Preach. It's a, it's but a fucking... him, not even him, because I didn't hear that. But that's exactly what it was. That just me thinking about it personally, and then I heard, like I talked to you, that Vince Staples interview where he talks about sort of that in a way and it got me really thinking about it and it was like it's interesting why? because it, what you think manifests into your actions and like you know what i mean like i get what you're saying because if you are shit talking motherfuckers in your head you're those motherfuckers are going to live inside your head they already won exactly <laughs> they already won at that point that's a very good point so like i don't simon beat you Derek. i don't mind <laughs> the don't whole like <laughs> Oh, this person said I'm an idiot. Fuck them. Like, of course, fuck them. They called you an idiot. Fuck them. But, but don't like, even have the presence of mind to give them a fuck For them. me, it's like just randomly saying, oh, fuck this person. Or like, oh, this person did this. It's stupid. Whatever. It's, it's a negative mindset. Hate takes a lot of work. It like, does. hate takes more. Like, forgiveness isn't about the other person it's about just taking that weight off your own shoulders right i found it's exactly. when you reach that point relaxing yeah. for me yeah it's a peace of mind once you once you realize that you're the only person you have to worry about yeah yeah but it's also not wrong to vent and we've had this conversation but a couple times and shit talking is a completely different thing as yeah, you they said are. They are. venting's more like oh this person called me an idiot like fuck them for saying not that. necessarily but, though hey. that I would. That is venting, though. That's that is one a, kind of venting. Yes, it's a one kind, yeah. but it's well, when people are like randomly, like for no reason, like. Oh, that well, guy's so fucking ugly! I hate that. Yeah, yeah, that's shit like talking. That. Yeah, that's that's weird. Yeah, fuck but you, Evan. <laughs> where, where does venting come from? It comes from letting them inside your mind, but venting is trying to get them out of your mind. One hundred percent, but that still stems from that negative. Yeah. Yeah that negative mindset like yeah. you know i mean having to vent about someone that still stems from that that whatever hate is a word but it's a, it's that's an extreme word but it's still that you're letting that negativity overcome you yes mm-hmm. it's like a certain and i definitely agree with you about not saying anything but it because it's also been brought to my mind because it happens a lot around me yeah i feel you well, yeah, there's been a lot of times where, like, you've called me and Nathan out, where, like, I don't know, like, Nathan might be leaning towards venting, but I just 
I just am a natural shit talker. <laughs> That's yeah. one thing I'm, I've learned this year that like I love shit talking, dude. Yeah. Well, I want to say and, something. Like, about I need to that work after. on it. Like, let me conclude so I don't sound like a shit person. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, like I said before, I've never been surrounded by this many people before. Yeah. Had this kind of relationship. Oh, I see a shirt. I was like, "What the hell?" Is <laughs> around right now? It's, it's one of these. For those of you who aren't watching, and, uh, we're like, naked. I've never vented like this before, because I've never ha- had these kinds of experiences. Yeah, you don't before. have like a network either, right? Yeah, before. exactly. So now I'm like, and that's what I'm saying. I learned something about myself. I am naturally introverted. Yeah, so are you saying you've never vented extrovertly like this before? Not really. And Have that's you the vented thing. with yourself like that before, though? I maybe, but why, like why I said, since the metal. It, but no, you're not. You're <laughs> right, though. You know, you you're know. right. <laughs> because metal is a good up the road, not a car metal, so, am I right? Like, listen to metal because it's cathartic for me. It's, it's real nice. nice. I agree. But what I like, like I said, I never vented before because I used to. Cheers. Cheers. I used to... Um, you got to drink after cheers. <sighs> fuck That's sake. how you know you didn't poison it. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> never, I used to take all this bad feelings and shove it down. And that's why over the years, <laughs> it grew and mutated into <laughs> like the self-hatred and the, like, the terrible feelings, right? So this year, I've been like getting rid of that. Because I'm like, I've been through the repression before, yeah. and that fucking sucked, so I'm not going to mm-hmm. do that anymore. You. So you feel empowered when you let it out? I'm not sure, because like I said, I'm experimenting. Yeah, and true. I find that I don't necessarily like it that much, because like we like we just said, you're letting somebody else into your mind. I want to get to the point where that person doesn't even get into my mind, but I'm not there yet. So if I see... Simon, do something stupid. It's like, why the fuck are you doing that, you idiot? Kind yeah. of thing. But it's like, that's that's also a part of me. Kind of, it's projecting, right? Uh, yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah. So, Is it cutting so out for anyone else? No. Okay, I keep getting cut. It's but, probably your. Uh, okay. Anyways, continue. So yeah, that's just a part of what I've been learning as well about myself and how I need to figure out how to deal with those because like i said i've never dealt with it in this way before before yeah. i used to deal with it so wrong so now it's better because but you're letting i still it out, right? yes yeah. i'm letting it out and it's not collapsing into itself and creating this dark hole of depression but maybe here's a lesson when john says he doesn't want that well, because hey, i don't want that either no exactly alert. i'm not saying you're not, not yeah. doing anything wrong, but you're saying you don't want to feel that negative energy right and you're still projecting that i do it too right uh-huh. but you're still projecting that well, negative not that energy i don't do it i i slip sometimes of course but, of course no one's we perfect we're not fucking angels you know <laughs> no I mean? like, well i don't perfect. necessarily not, you shouldn't want to look like gift. angel we're Hev- not all tj heaven, <laughs> heaven would be boring as fuck all right no one wants to go to heaven you want to uh, he- think about it uh, i don't I'm know an atheist. oh okay i just don't <laughs> believe well we talk about <laughs> My freak, dude. That's all the wrong team. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to add on, like, for I went, still go through sometimes, oh, but went through a lot of <coughs> similar, drink, at least, feelings as that's, Nathan that's did, <laughs> where, like, I did a lot of repression and that anger came out, like, anger came out of that, yeah. which I brought upon myself. And all that, which is where my whole depression, you know, self-harm, all that came from. And I've gotten to a point where he was maybe figuring it out this year. I figured it out in high school, at least for me. And this year was me trying to fix that fully. Yeah, and that's very honest. That's very honest for you, too. I've not fully... But I've gotten way better than before. You've experienced it before, right? Yeah. Like you felt what it feels like to have those emotions run through your head. See, I agree. I 
There's a point where you just can't worry about anyone else. And if you're worrying about someone else, no matter which way you're worrying about them, it's not going to help you. Well, I, I still worry a lot about people, but it, well, yeah, not but a lot of people, but not worrying as in like you have good intentions to the okay, person, but I like, see what wow, that then. motherfucker is an okay. idiot. Like, who cares? I thought you if were that talking about think good about intentions. Yourself before I do think there is a healthy level that needs to be maintained with that, though. For instance, uh, I need to think of an example real quick. Uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> you have to understand which actions people take to let, like, to, for instance, if I saw somebody getting, like, raped. Rape. Okay. <laughs> if I saw somebody get raped, I don't know why I after that. Sorry. <laughs> you can't. You can't just be like, oh, yeah. I'm not gonna let that affect me. I'd yeah. be like, no, I'm going to run in there and kick that fucking guy's ass. You know what I'm saying? Side note, yeah. John LaFarrette saved a girl from getting raped. What? One. Yeah. I don't well, know why, he's, he, why you're pointing pizza. at me. I'm not John LaFarrette. I know, but he's a small dude, but he's done martial arts his whole life. Found Damn. this, like, he was walking down town one time in Peterborough, I think. Fucking oh, Peterborough. Peterborough sketch, dude. <laughs> Saw this girl getting raped, kicked the dude's ass. God bless him. Saved so yeah, that's what you Good dude, do. even though he made fun of me. Good dude, though. <laughs> he did. Make Everyone fun seems of. to make fun of you, John. I know. But, like, not in a bad way. <laughs> you know, that guy who really good memes. talks slow. I'll, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I will admit there are a decent amount of times it gets taken not as a joke. Well, like, I know it's joking, but it's like, jokes hurt. I really don't like this. Do jokes Cause hurt? It's because it or happens. Do jokes hurt if you're a pussy? To me, oh. you know what? Maybe I Yo, am you a pussy. Been it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like it happens. Fuck. It's happened yeah, so. Are tough, though. You're beating. right. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I find some of the stuff has happened so much to me. The same stuff where maybe they haven't done it so much, but because I've experienced it so much that I don't take it. As a joke. Well, like, I know it's a joke, but it. Yeah. I don't take it as a joke. Yeah, I, I feel guess. you. But it's okay, that. Okay, but that's, that, that's you, though. Yeah. Well, hey, 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 I'm don't not tell them shit. <laughs> 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 is this your is podcast? That, is, <laughs> you got you to gotta ask the question. You can't tell someone something. Do you think that's a reflection of you or a reflection of the person making the joke? That's a reflection of me. See, that's I know that you can't tell someone some, but he's gonna admit that's it. That's you, John. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's yeah. me. And does that bother you? Does that negative Which, energy affect you when someone makes a joke about you? Yeah. Well, it depends. Like sometimes it's like it's a joke. Are you uh, conscious in that moment of like, wow, I shouldn't let this affect me? No, but it not is. at the moment. You're not, not in the moment. Not as it ha- it's happening. No. What's what's your thoughts while that's happening? My thoughts. This is an interesting. <laughs> what's what's your what's your frame of mind when someone's making a joke about you, in that precise moment? Can't really think of a specific thought, I guess. But I'm a little mad. And where? But time. where does that come from? From me hearing some of that stuff constantly. Yeah, when it's the so, same yes. joke. Yes. Like the it's same... happened over my whole life because I know okay. one thing is about my voice. <laughs> That's happened my Slow. whole like t- since I was a kid. Yeah. Whole life. See, I never even noticed it. Thank you. <laughs> no, I <laughs> like my voice. Yeah, no, I do. It's too. something like it's smooth. This isn't mm-hmm. something Good I was mad voice. at. Yeah, I could just sit there. But in uh, the elevator pitch, talk. the one comment I got from Brian no way. was, I need to add more inflection pretty much in my voice. And all, I, all, I, all I'm thinking is, like, I didn't take That's it amazing. offensively or anything. It didn't make me mad. I'm like, oh, it makes sense, I know. But it's like, honestly, I can't fix that because to me, I don't hear that. Where other people hear and monotone. It, w- <coughs> it wouldn't be you. You're not if and you, it wouldn't if be you me. It's like, right? this is exactly. just how I am. It doesn't sound monotone to me. But no, you're not monotone. Does. That's all people want is just you yeah. to be you, right? Yeah, no, exactly. And it's not even what people want. It's only, it's the best way you're going to yeah. get yourself. Yeah. It's going to be the best performance is if you're you. 
True. Yeah. It, performance, whatever you want to call that. But it's like if you're having a conversation, no one wants to have a conversation, and Nathan's over there, like, looking away and, like, being all, and not being able to voice his own opinion and voice the way it'd be natural about it. I, mm-hmm. I do look away a lot. I can't. I, I find it hard. <laughs> I true. can. Like, I'm looking at you right yeah. now in the eyes, but I can't do it for very long. I yeah. have to look away. I've actually noticed Evan is very good at eye contact in this I podcast. Know. And I You're like, like yes, that's like one of the things I'm, I'm constantly trying to work on. Yeah. I, I cannot look people in the eye. Yeah, both of you guys is kind of funny. <laughs> like, you said during, like, my performance before Elephant's Trunk, like, you said I did not look at the audience at <laughs> all. Like, See, I look up. I need to look. Yeah. That's when I do speeches because I've done that a lot. I'll but, just look above their head. Just or like don't be creepy head. about it though. I I no. Some people say I'm creepy about it. Oh, I don't find it for creepy. this podcast because you're talking to me. You're waiting for a response. I'm saying something. Yeah. No. I feel some people have been like, bro, just stop. Like, <laughs> well, stop I think looking at some me. people don't but know I how to have that's conversations. That, that's the thing. Oh, I, yeah. I honestly think it's the other person rather than me who has the issue with it. it absolutely. Yeah. I it don't bothers the well. If I don't know the person, I know you guys and your tendencies. So if you look away when we're yeah. talking in the conversation, I'm yeah, fine it's with like it. Yeah, rude. It's just but like I'm a Sometimes it's kind of like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like just fucking, <laughs> See, fucking look me in the <laughs> eye. Like, what the hell? <laughs> just fucking <Fun>. crooked. <laughs> I don't mind, like, you staring or so- anyone really staring when I'm having, like, a conversation because, yeah. like, they're paying attention of, well, hopefully. Yeah, no, and that's the point. It's like when you're having a conversation, you need to look in the motherfucker's when it's like, eyes. I'm yeah. not talking with someone, and I'm like sitting, and they're just staring at me. It's no, now of... it's out in the open, and everyone. Now, every time I make eye contact, it's like ah, the ceiling looks really interesting. <laughs> no, I get it, but it's like, how much more comfortable do you feel when someone's looking you in the eye and like? That's better. For me, I me too. It's like I try. And you're not paying attention to me mm-hmm. if you're not looking me in the eye. You're not. You're not listening to what I have to say if you're look, not looking me in the eye. For me, it's just it's really intimate and like that's a lot. Yeah, I, I feel, feel you because like my family was very like closed book and not like contact. I feel so it's like you. it's like something I have to work on. So mm-hmm. like, just like how I was raised. Interesting. That's very interesting yeah. because I'm sure a lot of people are like that. Yeah. I I'm sure it's very am. common. I try to like if I'm not staring you in the eyes, I'll yeah. try and like for the most part look at my bod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's not. exactly what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. like, Ooh, that's a nice <laughs> chest cavity. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stare him right in the nips. <laughs> no, it's I don't know. I I'm a lot like Derek in that way. Yeah, but it's, it's like I feel like when I'm on my off days, I don't look people in the eye. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. When I, I feel that's that. that's like my first telltale sign I'm having an off day. It's like when I walk up to people and I'm like, I'm kind of looking away and like I don't. Oh, I feel that. I you feel know, that. I, yeah, it's, it's like that's what I'm feeling when I feel my chest is lifted and I'm going up to motherfuckers. I was what like, chest? That's, that's a good day. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> no fun. Taking a piss on that. <laughs> You know, I pectoral I, excavatum. Get it. There's sometimes I'll get in a conversation. Oh I'll, shit! I'll be so like focused on like I'm gonna make eye contact. I'm I'm making eye contact. Boy, I'm making. Eye, oh, what the fuck did they just say? Oh, I wasn't paying attention at all. I was so focused on making eye contact. Like, That's, I, there's don't my brain just on. like chops itself in half. I, you know, I've been there. It's tough. Yeah, it is tough. But, um, like, I can't speak for you guys, but for me, like, when I was 19, before I had Way back my in the day. <sighs> monumental shift after Australia, Shame. I found it hard to look people in the eye. But that's because I was afraid of what they would see when they looked at me. I don't pay it. It just happens. I just don't. Yeah, it's just not It natural. feels uncomfortable to me. I'm socially awkward. <laughs> Yeah, but you're adorable, John. I, I fucking love you. No, I am, and I deal with I love you too, Derek. But you're not as adorable as John. Oh. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> I am okay with it. <clears throat> Did you just say you were socially awkward, John? Yeah. Are you? Do you really think so? 
I don't I think th- so. I think probably more people are socially awkward than you, and you just can't vibe with people who are socially awkward. And well, I think I think he is a little bit. I can't vibe with a lot of people, though. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I don't fucks with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk with people. Well, I find it's hard for me to, like, start conversations and, like, first... Getting to know people is the hard part. Like, really, <laughs> really, really hard for me. Unless they're coming up to me, talking with me first. Unless they <laughs> open up their walls yeah. before you do? Yes. I get that, because, like, this podcast would be going nowhere if it weren't for, like, yeah. Evan and it. Because, like, there's been times where it's me, John, you told me this Chris, before. and Nathan... So if you had me, Chris, and John on this podcast, it'd be dead air. Oh, I like, we'll be at McDonald's like, and there'll be no Chris, conversation. Me and Chris, like, have been times where it's just us and we're like we're cool with it, but we're just sitting quiet, yeah, like on our computers or something. Yeah, you told me one time, Derek. That'd be weird. I, I'm thinking about that. Fucking it's not atmosphere. weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be weird to me. Because like, well, like actually, around. We, we can all talk if yeah. we're prompted, but none yeah. of us know where to start, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, That's yeah, a weird spot. Derek told me one time that when we were in a studio session, it was me, John, Chris, Derek, and I left the room for some reason, and then it, everything just died. <laughs> <laughs> it's not awkward for me. Well, I here, know. Here's people my question. Have, people have awkward silences. I don't. Here's it's my just, question. If it's quiet, cool. Is at what point? Okay, a lot of people don't like silence. That's why they say um. Yes, a lot of people can't stand silence, it. especially in... Where did I hear this before? I, I can't remember, but... I get that feeling, too, you know? You're sitting in a room, and it's silent, and there's other people around, you're like... Like, you get you get that short of shortness of breath. You're probably better with me. I feel like I, like, I have I more like anxious silence. thoughts than you do mm-hmm. in terms of social. That's why I'm thinking that you're not socially awkward, because I'm sure I have more anxious thoughts socially than you do because I feel like you're just so calm and collected and you're I you're find within your that the most comfortable I'm not I can be around someone lot. is when there's a silence and we don't feel like we have to fill this. Yeah. yeah. And I actually just got to the point with me for you, John, recently. Mm. Like the last couple of times oh, you came over to my place. Close. We <laughs> kind of just like did our own things. I do that with my friends, so it's Yeah, exactly. Cool. But for me, it's like, always been like, if I have friends over, we're always constantly talking and hanging out and doing whatever. But, like, recently, like, you were doing your own thing. I was doing my own thing. But it wasn't awkward. We are just two, two friends hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, like, for me, it's even if I don't know the person, if it's silent, like, cool, I don't care. Yeah. I'll I do find, my own Fine for me. Like, it's a telltale sign whether I'm actually comfortable. Like, my two best friends from high school, it's like... We could sit there and like be in our like we're not even like not on our phone, not doing anything other than just being silent, and it's fine. Yeah, like you read like that's how I know I'm truly like comfortable with someone is if I can be silent. But like otherwise, like sometimes it's like I I try to think of something to say, and if it's silent, it's okay. But like I'll try and scavenge something to talk about. But, For, yeah. And it goes well, back to that thing about not being yourself. Like, once yeah. you start thinking about how you're going to respond, it's not yourself. And it yeah. just gets weird. It gets bumpy at that point. For me, it's more like I don't really... I'm fine with silence because, like I yeah. said, I'm introverted. I'm kind of a loner, which I know it may not seem like that to people who haven't known me yeah, but I that get long. That. I, yeah, I got that. For me, it's more like I'm worried that the other person is nervous when they're silent. Because I've yeah, yeah. very true. It's an interesting like I'm thought. fine with it, but I'm always like, oh, I wonder if the other person's bored or is is nervous or is like awkward or, or uncomfortable. So right you now. gotta be that mediator. Yeah, I guess for me, comfortable is a little. I'm gonna call it higher standards, although it's not higher standards. For me, being comfortable, if someone's like I can talk to them about certain problems. I don't talk with people, but for me to, I'll just. For me to know, like, that I'll call it comfortable because for me it's not really the definition of comfortable, but where I can, I don't feel anxious starting a conversation with someone is where I. That's so interesting. Where him, it's like for Derek, it's if 
he is okay with silence. For me, it's if I don't feel anxious starting a conversation. Do we? Th- do you think that's comfortable? W- how comfortable you are with yourself? Because I am very comfortable with myself, and for me, that means that I don't have a problem talking to anyone about almost anything. Mm-hmm. Before I used to be like I don't really want to talk to anybody about anything. Yeah, but, but now that I'm like. Doesn't mean that you're not bewildered at points, right? Yeah, like, it doesn't mean that that's not. But something do you think that that's a, in your mind? Do you think that's a different kind of being comfortable in your own skin? Then for me, it, I find it's because I guess I have like major major trust issues with people. Uh huh. Where I pretty much not. Fully, I. It's not that I don't fully distrust a lot of people. It's that I don't fully. I guess I don't have like, full trust of people or mo. Is that but, is that the other person? Or is that you? Yeah. I, I just have that. dealt with a lot of people that have either broken trust or I've seen pe- a lot of people who I would not trust. So you feel like there's scars there. I guess, yeah. There's a scar right here, man. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> Why is this about you? For those of you that's not home, his name is what? Nathan Scar. <laughs> Skathen Nard. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, but that's I it. guess so. Yeah, it's like it's an interesting it's like once you start to confront yourself with these these thoughts, it's like that's where the courage builds. Yeah. Oh yeah. It takes a lot of courage. Like I really oh, appreciate. Oh fuck yeah! I really for us to sit on this podcast. I and, yeah. well, like, I really appreciate this podcast because there's a lot of honest conversation, like very honest conversation. Not as far worrying as you know. about hurting <laughs> your feelings or not worrying about hurting your feelings. Not worrying about hurting my feelings. It's just very honest and it's reflection. So. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Derek. Well, that comes from understanding, right? Because we all understand that we're all trying to be honest and open ourselves up right yeah you could stretch but, it that way uh, yeah. no <laughs> this podcast is all about understanding Evan remember <laughs> you said it three, you I'm bitch <laughs> I, episode three I, <laughs> oh, I'm fun. honestly comfortable not trusting a lot of people like it doesn't bother me it's just there's nothing saying you is. have to trust people, right? Yeah. You're allowed to have your like, own I don't mind circle it of people myself. that you trust, right? But yeah. why, why do you need to trust people? True. That's a good question. Well, it it's all case by case. I like, just don't want people... I guess this is still kind of similar, but I don't... It could be... I guess maybe it's insecurity, but I don't want people having... This, it's kind of like how you don't want your computer, like you don't want government to have the information on your computer or like track your phone or whatever. I don't want but people don't to have, have like that knowledge. But you have a personal relationship with them that you it's could have with just, the person beside you. I don't want you. people having personal information, like that personal of information about me unless I want them to. Yeah, which tends to not like be pretty much no one i just feel that that what i've come to in my life in the past year is like having all that personal information out is such a weight lifted off my shoulders well oh yeah i have my friend i'm sure you can relate oh yeah i have my one friend who i tell pretty much everything you still have an outlet where i'm like they know it cool it's out for me, I got that out. I've done a lot, like a lot of venting this week with my friend, I mm-hmm. find, and it's, I feel better about that. Yeah, as long as you get it out, right? Yeah, it's out to one person, but it's not out to like a bunch of people. Yeah, no, I feel, I don't know, I'm, I just am so less worried about it now. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it. I can have such a better connection with someone when I show them all my insecurities and all my scars. Well, that that comes from being comfortable with yourself too. Yeah. But where does that come from? That's. Does it need to come from somewhere though? Like. Yeah, because. Does that come from experience yeah, of thinks. not being comfortable? Because that's where mine come from. I I'm. 
Like you guys didn't know me a year ago, but I'm know, sure you didn't know me either. No, I hardly yeah, even know no. you now. Exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. But it's like I I definitely went through that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not a fucking stranger to Yeah. anxious thoughts or I'm not a stranger to thinking to myself. But I think that also comes from understanding whose opinion matters. Because for me, I I just said earlier that I'm comfortable telling almost anything to anyone because I understand whose opinion actually matters to me. You know what I'm saying? But is that because you trust yourself enough? Yes. Because you look in the mirror and you say you not only tell yourself how good you are, you tell yourself how bad you are too? Yes. Yeah. I think that's where it comes from for me. It's like Being you real have, with yourself? 100%. You you have the ability to look in the mirror and see all your zits. Yeah. You have, see, the, But also see the beautiful parts. Exactly. And... And then you look, as soon as you have that perspective, you look into someone else and that's the exact perspective you have of the other person. Exactly. When you look at yourself. Exactly. I'm going to have You're so right, though. to yeah. agree with, I guess, the, the way he thinks being right. But I also think not to be and have an ego, but I think the way that I think about that stuff, I don't see a problem with it. Do you think it's important to have an ego, though? Yeah, well, everyone does have an ego. You're right. That's a very but true statement. I right think there. I think you don't want your ego, like Simon said. Although, when he said it, no, give him a give him a little credit. No, 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 no. He's okay, okay, no, 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 no. Simon does what, have some good points. What yeah. I was trying to say is, when he talked about ego, I think for what we were talking about at that time, it was not yeah. needed, but. What he was saying was still very true. It's you more don't want to have right? yes. too low of an ego and well, well, be actually, like that comes, super sorry. uncomfortable, sorry. but you don't want too high of an ego where you think you're just better than everyone and you're the shit. Yeah, but that comes from being real with yourself, too. So, yeah. like, that was one thing I'm like, <clears throat> you know what? You're spitting some truth, but the wrong time to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, today we were talking about. Because I missed yesterday's class, so we were talking about uh, how they said the JAMA Arts program is done after this year, and how MIA might take over that room for a live performance class. Uh-huh. And I was like, man, I would have loved a live performance class, and then they could just tell me how garbage it was. Like, just sort of like, not necessarily serious about them just ripping me apart, but it's like, it's nice to, for someone to look at you on stage from a th- third party and tell you what's wrong, right? And he's like, no, 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 like... They, they, they need to bring you up. They need to, like, always hype you and, like, always, True. like, you need to know how to work a crowd. I'm like, well, yes, like, they need to tell you what's good, but, like. Yes. But what's what's a valuable opinion? An opinion the that real coddles you or an opinion that's honest? See, he was, like, so far on the coddle side. I'm like, oh, no, I agree with you, Simon. Like, there needs to be the positive reinforcement, but, like, there also needs to be some, like. Real shit. I think he like, was. You need to tell me what I'm doing wrong. But, but I don't think. The positive reinforcement needs to come from other people. That needs to come from within yourself. You need to have the hardship and the attack, and you need to go through all that you fucking but it suck. Helps. Yes, but you do need, if like in this scenario, no. if you're starting out in a live performance, you need to know what you're doing wrong, but you also need to know what you're doing right. Because if someone says, you know, your posture is a bit weird. The way you talk to the crowd wasn't that great. But the way that you held steady tempo and that, that's good. You're good at that. Keep up with that. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. gives you a groundwork to say, okay, I have this down. Let's work on this other shit. Well, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, I would have never but that's also going like, is that Is that not only... Sorry to interrupt no, you. No, no, no. Fucking... Is that not only something... Is that positive reinforcement only to get you back up there? What do you mean? Like, oh, you held steady tempo, and it's like, okay, yeah, then I can do this. I mean, it, it I guess kind of. Shouldn't but that come from within yourself to a certain extent? You're right, but like, if you're just starting out at something, yeah, it's nice to hear. When you told me that you admire me for how comfortable I am with being myself, you're the first person that ever told me that. And at that point, I was like, Wow. I guess I'm doing something right. Yeah, but you really... You know what I'm saying? But you really... I believe that before, but sorry. it's nice to have somebody sorry, else say sorry, that. Sorry, but 
are we talking about the first performance? Because you really earned that. Uh-huh. If you think about your life, you've spent, you've gone through those trials and tribulations. You've yes. You've earned that compliment. You've earned that. You're right. It, 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 is that your first time up? No. If someone said that the first time up, would that be the same impact as it has now? No. Or you're, is that your no. last, is this your final performance of the year? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I do think that Derek's right. You do need to have sometimes, not all the time, but yeah. sometimes, because I love I love actual criticism. Yeah, I like being told when I'm wrong so that I can not be wrong anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's also nice to know when you were right. And I, like you said, the reason why I'm, I try to be comfortable with myself and live the the life I try to live because I think that this is the right way to do it. But when somebody else tells you who you respect, because I respect you, man, and I respect your opinion, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, shit, cool. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, like... Because you feel like you've earned it, though. You're right. right. I feel like I was like, wow, that's validating because I've worked hard to be at this point. You yeah. feel like you've put in that work. So, so if you're, someone comes up to you and gives you an eighth place trophy, have you earned that? No, you haven't. You haven't, right. you haven't done shit, right? I'm going to go right. to something that's not to do with music. Yeah. This is more physical. So yeah. mm-hmm. for me, I dealt with a lot of like body self-conscious stuff. Yeah. Where like me getting this tattoo, me getting the piercing makes me feel better about myself and then people like my grandma for one she doesn't like you know facial piercings she doesn't mind earrings but she told me she's like i actually like that piercing on you and that made me although i already felt like oh i like how i look more because of this piercing that was just like you know <coughs> like the cherry on top where it's like oh thank yeah, but you that you know? was post that was post your confidence for you getting that already. I it's not like okay, it's a, yeah, fake, yeah. a fake piercing. Yeah. It's like you already went up there and gave it your all. So your argument is is that if someone's if at someone's base really, zero and yeah. they haven't earned it, yeah. okay. you're saying that they shouldn't get it. 100%. I was yeah. There yeah. should be nothing it. given to you I was, because that's a false sense of confidence. It's like that's false. You're lying to the person. You're coddling that person's ego. By giving them that. I can see that. I, but taking, I see your point. Yeah. But I don't think anyone's ever, like, put themselves out there without, you know, earning. You know, like, you put yourself out there. It's true. You've earned it. And if you get that reinforcement, like, yeah, just, I get it, yeah. Just burying yourself on a stage like that is really hard. Yeah. I was taking it as true. that you only thought that we should get the criticism. Like, constructive oh, okay. criticism, but criticism is what I was taking no. as you. But now yeah. I understand your what you're saying. I just believe it. I just really believe in tough love. Well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I just tough. really, I think it's like we, we are grown up in schools and we're taught to not believe. Yeah. We shouldn't be taught to not bully because there's going to be bullies. Everywhere. No, I agree with you. There's taught how be, to handle it. You need to be taught how to handle those bullies. You need to be taught how to handle that bullshit. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be you teaching you to put that shit away and like hide it and not be a bully because that's going to come no matter what. Yeah. It's well, just the way it's the balance. And it's like you need to be taught how to handle that. So I think and I agree. It's like you have to be on that point to get up on the stage. You have to already have uh, overcome those adversities. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. I have a really I, weird like analogy for it. Like, you're going to think, like, what the fuck is Derek going to do? But, like... <laughs> I think that all the time. Like... I, <laughs> gay porn. Like, people... <laughs> no, not gay porn, but... Like, like, the really kinky, like, BDSM, like, like abuse porn shit, yeah. like... Oh, my very, God, that's so funny. <laughs> I know. I thought you were kidding me. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I really... I like, need to hear this. A very important part of, like, you know, like, people who are into, like, the chains and whips and, like, beating is, like... The nurture after, right? Okay. Like, like, to reconfirm, like the like the love and like. Okay. So, like, okay. You I see like, that. You chain someone up and like whip but them, but then after like, you have to cuddle the fuck out of them. Like. But I feel like that's some of daddy issues. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> my, dad did, my dad did leave me. When I was <laughs> no, but like, you know what I mean. Like you gotta yeah. have like tough love, but you also need to have the the important part is yeah. the love. I part, think right? the most important part though. 
is being real. Because if someone went on stage and, like I said before, you need to work on your posture, you need to work on your crowd interaction, but your tempo is good, that's not someone saying that for the purpose of building someone's confidence. They're saying that that's the way it actually is. You yeah, know what they're I'm not saying? like lying and saying, like they're not scrounging for something to say that's good. They, well, like, that's that's they how I think something you did good. Dick Cooper did, right? Because yeah. Dick Cooper was our teacher that in class intro. class was the best thing Exactly, to for me. performance class. When someone got up, he'd say, okay, well, you need to work on this, you need to work on this, but you know what? You did pretty well on this. Good job. But it was but, no bullshit. There's no fluff. He's like, this is how it is. He was things. just happy I got up. Once. I think <laughs> tough love <laughs> is actually crazy. about being real with someone, yeah. not just ignoring or not giving them a carrot. You know what I'm saying? It's if you need to give them a carrot, but also slap them a bit, yeah. then you got to do what you got to do because that's what actual tough love is. Or that's what real love is. You know what I'm um, saying? We need a tough I'm going, You guys just changed my perspective, and I appreciate I, that. I, I, I appreciate I, you I, for admitting I, I, this podcast, man. No, uh, this is a heart I'm gonna miss this no, fucking. One hundred percent. We'll, we'll do a Skype podcast. <laughs> You're right. We need to. We need, we need to. to. Um, one yeah, luck because I've been watching lots of kit- kitchen nightmares because I'm mm-hmm. seeing Alex D and sure. Lindsay watching. It. I know, me too. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I should check this out because I. Wait, but um, it's gonna go with this tough love thing. I don't know if it's just for the show. Maybe this is him in person, but Gordon Ramsay on those shows, he won't put up with people's bullshit. He'll tell them, like, this fucking sucked or whatever, like, whatever. Yeah. But then he gives them the, the credit advice, they deserve. The advice they need to improve. And when they improve that, he'll be like, like, there you go. Like, this is how you run a restaurant or whatever. Yeah, he makes them earn it, like you're saying. No, right? exactly. You really need to deserve. There needs to be a, there needs to be a point where you deserve that. There's no. It's like, yeah. I've heard. I don't know who I heard from, but life is binary. You either win or you lose. There's no you, in between. You're not you. first. You're late. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky asked that when I was drunk. I was fucked up. <laughs> but it's either a win or a lose. It's either a one or a zero. You can't have an eighth place trophy because that's not going to help you. No partici- yeah. participation. Man. Yeah, participation trophies generation. are not going to help you, no matter what situation. All right, come here, Nathan. Sit down for a second. Come, come here. We're, we're ending it. We're ending oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's been a minute. Time well, I have good uh, 11. Yeah, no, that's perfect. I need an hour to I hang in my assignment, some too. Time, yeah, yeah, no, same. <laughs> okay, well, I appreciate it, you all. Thank you. I don't know where we are. I at, appreciate it. I, I learned something. This was a crazy road. Yeah. 100%. I, and I've been dealing with that for the past few months. You know, I mean, picking between... T- I need to be... There's parts in my life where I need to be more soft than I am hard. And it's like, where, what? Kinky. Yeah, no, 100%. Mm -hmm. But it's, I definitely, 100%, you're right. Okay. Uh, Okay. Good night. All right, good night. Love Love you you all. Adios. That's it. I'm Derek. (laughs) 